Good morning, everyone. I am making another recipe today. This was kind of spur of the moment where we just don't have anything sweet around here <laughs> as a little like after dinner treat, right? So this recipe I would not necessarily call a hack, but in a sense, I wanted to find a recipe that mimics a product, a bar that we love at the bakery. We have lunch at in Bemidji. That was a mouthful, right? Okay, so in Bemidji, there is a bakery that serves lunches and of course all types of baked goods. And it's called Raphael's downtown Bemidji. And they have what they call a fruit and nut bar that we pick up every time we're in there. And they're just delicious. I, They're sweet and they're chewy and they're delicious. So of course, we love buying them. We love supporting this business. The owners are wonderful people. But I wanted to make something like this at home. So I started searching for recipes and I am a cookbook person. I get that from my mom. When we say like you use a cookbook, she reads cookbooks and I'm not joking. She will like page through and read cookbooks. So I kind of come by that naturally. It clearly does not skip a generation <laughs> because I love cooks books too and I collect them in a sense and I use them. So instead of reaching for an internet recipe, I always like to even start in my own library and see what I can find. So I did find a recipe to give it a try. So Taste of Home. I don't know if you're familiar with Taste of Home stuff. They have had, have, I'm not sure, a magazine at one time where it would come every month and it would be recipes. So these are like from real cooks, like real American, Canadian women, men who submit recipes and of course they go through their taste kitchens and all that stuff, all that jazz. But I found this recipe. So chewy date nut bars. Oh yeah, we're totally trying that, right? There's like one, two, three, six ingredients. I can do that. All right, so we, this is what we're making today. And I'm calling it a hack recipe because it starts with a cake mix. <laughs> starts with a cake mix. So I have dumped in my cake res or cake mix. Now I have to give you this disclaimer. Do what I say, not what I do. Because I have already made half of this recipe so you can see what they look like turned out. But I'm gonna read the full recipe while I'm only actually creating the second half. Does that make sense? Okay, so again, this starts with a yellow cake mix, a full yellow cake mix. I don't even think it matters what brand, it doesn't say, just your favorite yellow cake mix, okay? So then the next thing is three quarter cup brown sugar. And brown sugar, you generally pack it, okay? You probably know that, but I'm just gonna give you a reminder in case you forgot. So three quarter cup brown sugar packed, okay? Brown sugar. Next thing, three quarter cup butter melted. And I've melted this in the microwave. I have a melt function which makes life easy. And that is ready to go in. The next thing is a couple eggs. So I'll crack a couple eggs in here. And room temperature they always say is best when you're using eggs for baking. I can't tell you why, but that's what I've been told. So I always try and set them out at least an hour before I'm ready to use eggs, okay? Next thing, a cup, two cups, sorry, of chopped, this calls for dates, two cups of chopped dates, two cups of chopped walnuts. Now, I have a couple dates, but I use mixed fruit. So mixed dried fruit of whatever you have around. So like for me, I have papaya. Fleet Farm is a great place to get dried fruit, by the way. You probably know that if you're from this area. So I've got a bunch chopped up here, but I just did a variety. So I had some of this all fruit mix, I had some prunes, I had some apricots, I had some mango, I have some papaya in here, and of course I do have dates on hand too, the med medjool dates um, that Scott uses in smoothies every morning. So I had those as well. So that is my fruit, dried fruit. So again, it calls for two cups and two cups of fruit. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Use whatever dried fruit that you have around that you want to use, okay? So the next thing would be the two cups of chopped, what it says is walnuts. Now, I don't even have walnuts on hand. I'm not 
I'm not a huge fan of walnuts. I like to have nuts around the house all the time. And again, I like them toasted. I think it really brings out the nuttiness and it just gives them a better flavor. So I'm chopping up pecans. I'm gonna do pecans and almonds because that's what I have on hand. And that's what we have on hand all the time because I use them on salads, um, specifically, mostly on salads, but they're always just good to have around to munch on too. So we're just gonna chop this up. And I don't think it really matters how fine you chop them up per se, just whatever you want, right? So if you want it really fine or if you want a little, little bit more chunky, whatever's going to suit your taste. So there are my pecans. Well, I'm getting pretty close here. I'm not gonna need too many almonds. But again, I keep almonds on hand and I always toast them before I use them because I think you get better flavor. And these are already sliced so they don't really require anything but a rough chop. And we are good to go. Okay, so there we are. Okay, that's it. So that is it. I am just going to mix this up and we'll see what we have. Now this batter is really thick, so I'm gonna tell you that right now. It is very thick. I use my KitchenAid. Of course, if you don't have a KitchenAid, you probably wanna use a hand mixer in this case because it is just really a chunky batter, okay? All right, that's it. It doesn't take too long to mix that in. So I'm just gonna scrape off my paddle. Okay, so here's the batter. Let me show you what this looks like. So again, it's very thick. It's very chunky. <laughs> and that's just fine. Okay, that is just fine. So now you wanna spray a pan. And again, for the whole recipe, it's a 13 by nine. So like a cake pan size. These, because I'm just doing half, I'm doing a little square pan. And then we just wanna get this batter spread out best we can in here and then you bake them off. So 350 degree oven, and you don't wanna over bake these. Um, you want them to remain chewy. The brown sugar is what is gonna give you that chewiness, and of course the sweetness too. But that is the reason for the brown sugar over white sugar. But we're gonna bake this at 350. It says for 35 to 45 minutes, and I have got my recipe circled 35. So 35 was plenty. For me, um, for this half recipe, I actually baked these 25 minutes and that was plenty for a half recipe. So we're gonna bake these off. You know what's really nice about these is that they travel easy. I had made these before beet harvest when Scott goes to help his brother-in-law down in Castleton and he said they did travel really well. They're not like crummy. <laughs> um, in the sense that they crumb out like a cake type bar. Do you know what I mean? So they're, of course, dry. There's no frosting or anything on them like that that is gonna be messy, and they're just really a good, chewy, kind of healthy snack, right? Okay, so I'm gonna throw these in the oven. All right, now here's my pan that is done so I can show you. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> they really are. Um, I cut them with a plastic knife. That's kind of a little trick. Plastic is not gonna like stick to your knife when you run your knife through. And I don't know why that is, but I just have much better success when I do that. So again, you can cut these into any shape you want. Now what I'm used to at the bakery, they cut them kind of into these triangle, or not triangles, kind of like an oblong rectangle, okay? so. Yeah, and you, you can even see like how dense they are. <laughs> they're really good. And they're still a little bit warm. They smell delicious. I'm gonna just, yeah, they smell delicious. Mm-hmm. They're so good, you guys. And you can totally play around with what fruit or nut you want in there. I'd be really curious for somebody to try this and let me know what, what happens. You could probably even use a chocolate cake mix, right? Put in whatever nuts you want or um, even chocolate chips or some type of candy in there. 
I'd be really curious to what that all came out like too. But they are really delicious. Like I say, they travel well. I consider them a little bit healthier anyway because you're getting some fruit and nuts in there. So I hope you give them a try. Let me know what you think. And yeah, thanks for tuning in and have a great day. Again, I hope you have something fun planned on your menu today. This was just kind of a spur of the moment thing that I figured I've got my kitchen clean. Why not mess it up, right? <laughs> I like the lived in look. Okay, guys, have a great day. And I hope you, again, have something great planned on your menu.